welcome to the 17th episode of the Fan of Flux podcast. I, once again, I'm your host, KCW, and with me this week, we have Kenchi618. It's Kenchi again this year, internet. Enjoy. <laughs> King of Zero X. Right on time? No, I'm not, but I'm here. No, no, you're not. No, no. You're really not. <laughs> no bad. You're close, kind of. Hello. And new this week because Ethan had to drop out and we wanted to, you know, change up the roster sometimes a little bit. We have Okay. Uh Ignis. Eden Ignis Magus. Yo. Yeah, we're gonna be calling That's him That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, we're gonna call him Ignis, I think. Yeah. For the purposes of like not mm. That's yeah, that, a would, name. that would do. Simplicity. Yeah. Ethan's original pen name, by the way, was The Name's The Same. And hmm, I actually got him to change that specifically because of this fucking podcast. So. <laughs> yeah, alright, so. What we're going to do first is... Uh, should we do... Let's do Ignis' intro first. So, yeah, let's Ignis... Give him, let's give him a little background and you yeah. can then throw what he's doing out there. Yeah, let's uh, start with you, Ignis. Who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? Tell the people. Yeah. Okay. I write fan fiction. I do it because there's nothing better to do. Now, because um, I don't really know, to be honest. And now you just put me on the spot. You could have told me about this beforehand, you know. It, it was in the, the, the topic list. <laughs> the topic list. Uh, yeah, it says, it says there, intro. That could mean you introducing me. Which I did. Just, yeah, exactly. There we go. Done. Over. <laughs> okay, he's wrote, he's written a bunch of stories, as in like, you know, almost yeah. into the triple digits level of stories. Almost, nah, it's not that much, is it? Might be, I don't know. Oh, Ninety-eight. Yeah, yeah I was, I was much closer than I realized. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So kind of experienced a little bit in Just writing fan fiction. So, a lot of them, a lot of them, I've been rewriting though, so mm. they don't count. What the do-overs? Oh, so you've got yeah. them as separate stories. It's like yeah, because I just started them as separate stories because rather than overlapping it all and confusing the heck out of people. Yeah. Okay, so just for the fun of it, I think I'm going to pull up your page. Oh, crap. Hang on. <laughs> there you go. I'll, I'll let out the C-bomb now, yeah? Uh, no, you just wait until that comes up on the topic list. All right. As of this recording... Author has written 98 stories for Harry Potter, Dragon Ball Z, X-Men, Naruto, Twilight, Hannah Montana. <laughs> uh, that, that, was, that was only a one-shot, and I can't remember what the hell it was for, no, to be honest. Not judging, it, it, not it, judging. It was, much, it, was, it was pretty much just porn, mate. It was just porn. <laughs> All right. Okay. Justice League, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, yeah. good shout. Stargate SG-1, again, good shout. Uh, crossovers, it's non-specific, but crossovers. He has written a lot of those, in fairness. Kim Possible. Okay. Sailor Moon. Again. Okay. Doctor Who. Good shout. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, Young Justice. Code Geish. Avengers. Yeah. What's Geish? Geish yeah, well, is how it's pronounced. Nah, the anime English dub says Geass. <laughs> that we is... had this conversation last <laughs> week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm calling it Gias because it's it, it's it sounds better. Okay, you can go on now. Go on. Avengers, <laughs> Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Devil May Cry. Which version, by the way? Old version, um, new version. Not really. It was part of a crossover. Oh, okay. Fair enough. So, not really important. Uh, uh, King of Bandit Jing. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Vaguely familiar Watch with it. that. Okay. It's fun. Infamous. Good job. Yeah. Negima. Yeah, I'm not reading the rest of that title. <laughs> Xenosaga. Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Green Lantern. Good shout. Men in Black. Hoodwinked. Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha. That's a name. Another crossover. Final Fantasy XIII. Avengers. Again. Tomb Raider. Card Captor Sakura. And... Toaru Majutsu no Index. That's um, a, 
a certain a certain magical yeah. index. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Mm. But they, they they have to give you the hard name to say. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's you, that's a lot of series, dude. You probably don't know who I am, but I like you after hearing all that. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh. get into things and whatever you know. Yeah. Comes to mind, I have to write it down and. God damn. Okay, so that's a list of fandoms. Um, so you've written a lot of crossovers. A lot of your stories are Harry Potter based. Mm-hmm. So there's some that are Naruto based. A uh, fair amount of them are based around comics. So yeah. that's the general. Yeah, stuff. Well, I, st- I started writing because of Harry Potter. It was because um, what was it? It was um, the Order of the Phoenix by Vice Bite. No, I first Rice read Bite? was a. Fan fiction. Hang on. I look at my favorite. I look at my favorite authors. Fourth one. Vice bites. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Just gotta. Oh, rook bite. Okay. Yeah, that's what. That's that's what. It, well, whatever it says. Okay, I've not heard of that one, but fine. Fair enough. No. Yeah. Order of the Phoenix, pretty popular series. It's had um, Order of the Phoenix, Well of Shadows. And um, shattering of souls, which had never, be, which has never been completed, but you know, fair enough. That's I don't know where I found it to begin, to begin with. It was a um, PDF file, and mm-hmm. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Wanted to give it a shot. Now I've written ninety-eight stories. Ninety-eight stories, yeah. Okay. Uh, Plus the ones in t- my save folder. Yeah. Tell you what. <laughs> Story you're most <laughs> proud of. Let's call it your fl- flagship story. What would that be? Um, my flagship story. Um, well, my flag flagship story was. Um, um, hang on, where is it? I can't remember what I called it. Well, we won't know, will we? But, yeah. Well, no. I was talking. I was talking to myself. Sorry. Fair Let's see. He's done so many. He has to think about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> proud of him. Uh, my my pr- all right. My proudest. Mm, I'm not really sure. Be perfectly up. Uh, <laughs> see, uh, it's like trying to choose your favorite child. Yeah, he yeah. loves them all equally. Out of 98 well, children. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's some honesty well, right there. No, I don't. <laughs> a lot of them I think are crap. So. Um. See, uh, it's a hard one. You should have asked me this before we started. Well, it just came to me. Sorry, but uh, just pick one in particular that you're proud of. Then, not necessarily your absolute best oh, one, but one you, you think one that you like people to read. Yeah, it shows a good idea of your work, I suppose. Maybe. Um, <clears throat> maybe. You're making this harder now. Oh. Maybe burst reality. Burst reality. Okay. Yeah. That would be. I'd have to find that's, out. That, yeah. That's one of my favourite to write because it's a multiverse time travel sort of story where I can just add in whatever the hell I like. You know, how he tra- travels from reality to reality, screwing things up or making them better. Oh, yeah. well, I can choose, you know. Yeah. I must. Uh, Almost read that one. Didn't for some reason. I don't know why. But it's a link that I apparently clicked on, so. Mm. So, okay. That's the new guy. Uh, introduced. Let's call it that. So, kind of. Alright, so. Took a while. Usual topic. What we're doing. What have we been doing? We'll start with Kenchi. Okay. Kenchi is pretty much as in as he's going to get on his news job. He starts Monday. Which is tomorrow as recording time. So it is. And I'm terrified. Oh <laughs> Shut up. You can do oh. it, we believe in you. Little Ken's first big job. I don't oh. need you to believe in me, I believe in me. But oh. anyway Believe in the me that believes in you. Okay, I will do that. <laughs> don't drop that reference ever again. Yeah. <laughs> that that's kinda of tired now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Anyway. Because of that, I am pretty much trying to marathon out the three updates that I'm not going to finish. I'm going to finish one of them probably by tonight. Mm. 
and that's for the Naruto Bleach crossover because I've let that thing sit idle way too long because I lost the data for it. Yeah, that's been a so while before gotta, updating. I gotta finish it, so I'm gonna be probably doing that and finishing it before 5, maybe, p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, we <laughs> and it's like 1 right now. Yeah, we have issues with time zones over here on the Fandom Flux. Yes, that's why I dropped EST, EST to make sure people know. Yeah, because it's, it's it important. <laughs> Oh, so uh, at that time, he was, in fact, writing a story at the time that this recording was... I, when you're listening to this, he'll have written it already, but back then, that's when he was writing it. So what were you doing when Kenshi was writing his story? Sleeping, probably. <laughs> sleeping. I wish I could be sleeping. See, someone wanted to push the recording back at the last minute. And uh, I am now operating on two hours of sleep because of this. Then he decided to show up half an hour late. So, on that note, King of Zero, what have you been doing this week? <sighs> well, um, uh, you know how I mentioned that RPG Maker program before? How I was getting that for like Christmas or whatever? Yes. I think I did. Yes. Uh, well, I started making a Fandom Flux game. Is that not going well? <laughs> you sound tired and depressed. I, I, I started making it. It's called Final Flux right now. I might change the title. Mm. Um, so far, I've got the event. I've got it up to the point where you meet Kenshi. Mm. And uh, it's it's a whole it's a, it's a sprite based game really. So it's kind of got that Final Fantasy type look to it, like classic. Mm. Um, and it's made in RPG Maker, so yeah, it, so, it looks like uh, an RPG Maker game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Casey's there. Uh, he kind of appears in the sort of near the beginning, so you get him pretty easily. Uh, I'm trying to make it so you get all the party members pretty easily. I was going to make Ethan a sprite, but apparently he left. So I might as well just make him the first boss. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna. Okay. Is he? Is he going to return at all to the podcast? Uh, uh yeah. He. Mm, we. He's 17, so he has things. Hmm. He has emotional fluctuations, we'll call it that. And hooliganizing to do. Well, if, um, if he's he... American and from the South, so not so much. Oh, so what no. did... it's none of that then. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's a little racist, man. What, for saying he doesn't go hooliganizing? <laughs> cause you, cause you call no, it. To say people from the South are different from people to the North. <laughs> who, who, do, who obviously do go hooliganizing? In fairness, do they? I don't know. Americans, do you go hooliganizing? No, I don't even know what that is. I don't is. even know what that do you is. I mean, hooliganizing. Okay. Is it a uh, verb? Sports event. You. Oh, hooliganizing. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, I get it. Can't you get Sometimes. It? Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. See. Like at Alabama Auburn games, there's a good chance of hooliganizing may ha transpire. Alabama's in the south, yes? Yes. Okay, so I was absolutely wrong. They do, yeah, in fact, hooliganize in the south. Yes. I apologize. They hooliganize in I the south more than in the north. I sincerely apologize for my oversight. Yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that was poor of me. I apologize. <laughs> so. Uh, oh, this got, this got slightly offensive really fast. Uh, <laughs> Continue, so back to zero. what I was doing. I was making yeah. this uh, game, and it looks pretty awesome right now. Uh. I have to, of course, make my own enemies and everything, so it's taking a while, but I made Kenshi a sprite, and I made uh, Casey a sprite. I was going to import some ODST sprites for Slicer, because that's his image. Is he that'd ODST cool. trooper? So that'd be, you know, <laughs> Slicer. Um, I'm making sure we have plenty of references and everything in there. Uh, you, you should make that dude who's constantly sending mess who's like the dude that mainly leaves comments on the fandom flux page you should make him like oh uh, yeah Johnny <laughs> yeah I actually you should make him like I actually oh, you did I might make him I might be making him the the main guide character that pulls us into this whole RPG universe thing <laughs> oh god <laughs> well that's nice of you <laughs> <laughs> because why not and the, the, sure. the whole premise of it is that um this guy had contacts with 50 Cent, and 50 Cent wants us to get his skull back, and it's in a fantasy world. <laughs> so it's a blood <laughs> on the fantasy not? world. <laughs> okay. 
Um, I'm making our own classes. Um, Casey, your current class, I might change it, but right now it's a Brit. That's the name of your class, Brit. <laughs> okay. That's a class? Yeah. Um, <coughs> Kenji's yeah it's class, a high class, you could say. Kenji's class is part-time MMA. Um, well, my class is accurate. War Chicken Chef. Um, right now I only have one skill for Kenji, and it's a sort of a limit break skill. It's hand to break. Punch so hard that you break your own hand. In fantasy, it wasn't, it wasn't because he punched that hard, it was that he punched <laughs> wrong. <laughs> he fucked it up, and that's why it broke. Yeah, and Kenji's <laughs> default items, he, he's wearing a suit, because he's going to work. When he gets suddenly pulled into this universe, um, he has practice let's see, practice gloves, and Kenji's paycheck is his accessory. <laughs> <laughs> and the okay. uh, description for that I put in is smaller than he'd hoped. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you! How did you tell you how much I get paid? <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> um, Casey, you, you look like a, you're the mage character. Um, and you're like in robes, and so your default equipment is pajamas. <laughs> you're actually wearing pajamas. By the way, I don't actually wear pajamas, I sleep naked. Okay. Every, everyone needed to know that. Okay. That was entirely necessary for me I to can, dive I can, I, can, I can update that then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and Not actually sleepwear, you could add that as the description. <laughs> and Casey's uh, accessory item, he comes with him. Um, he comes with is his next is his update for Fez for Fez face of Risha mm. Casey's next update for Fez fanfiction that he keeps forgetting to update in fairness Ethan hasn't actually gotten me the next yeah. chapter yet so you know um, my default mm. weapon are heat gloves though they may have <coughs> fail, though they Naturally. may have failed to protect him before they're re they're soaked in oil and ready to burn enemies just like they burn zero uh, yeah, that's that great <laughs> <laughs> I actually have like the image of heat gloves as the uh, as like gloves for the icon. <laughs> um, uh, Casey dual wields uh, staves, although I said as a stave, uh, one is a nice cane, and mm. that's as it should be. Yes, it's. I mean, uh, I should get a cane. It, it will be upgraded to fancy cane, and then uh, probably something else later on. Uh, let me just see if I can find a description for it. When I made it, jewel encrusted cane. <laughs> yes, pimp cane. It's uh, it's actually really fun to do this. Stuff. Nice cane. After years of thinking it would be cool to have a cane, Casey finally got this off eBay. Fair enough. And it sounds your, like something I would do. And your other item that you have is a nice hat. A nice hat, Casey bought. Fun to hit people with. I do have a nice hat. It's a trail beat, by the way. You should look that up. Use it as the image. <laughs> So, Casey, you wield a nice cane and a nice hat. You're a dual-wielding mage. <laughs> and Okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and I can set in weaknesses. I'm going to set your weakness to light. Logical. <laughs> Absolutely logical. Or rather, holy, because that seems to be the one for light. Or thunder. What would you rather have, holy or thunder? Holy also makes sense. Thunder I don't really care about. Okay, then Kenchi's weakness shall be thunder, unless you want to change it up. Hmm. And I have, uh, I made some skills. Casey, you have the skill of Voice of Bailey. It's your limit break skill. It boosts everybody's stats for five turns. It's where you play I almost, I almost regret bringing that up, but no. <laughs> no, it needs to be said, Laura Bailey is a goddess. Originally, so. originally it was Voice of the Goddess, but that wouldn't fit. Well. <laughs> um, your See, other skill, even Zero knows it, so, you know. Your other skill is Skullduggery, <clears throat> where you pull out a, a sword from your cane, and then hit somebody with it. The sword um, or the cane? The, you, the sword. Oh. <laughs> um, my current skills are <clears throat> Burns, where I throw hot oil at people. And... Uh, Nintendo for the win, where I rant and rave about Nintendo games. These are just first level limit break skills, by the way, the first level limit break skills. There will be second level ones. I need, I need more skills. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna be making Kenshi more skills. You're not gonna have any MP based skills, they're all gonna be like a certain amount of the limit break or technical point gauge. Oh, I understand. Yeah, Gage. so the more you get hit, the more damage you can deal out. 
You already, I think for it's... some reason, I think you hit twice, actually, right now. With your practice I like cards. that a lot. <laughs> so, um, so if you guys want, you can send me skills, items, things that you think would fit you, uh, or whatever, ideas, enemies, you name it, and I can try to put that, try to put it in. Uh, Slicer, if you want, send me all the things that you think would be skills or whatever, and equ starting equipment, and I can really get you in there too. And uh, if Ignis decides to be a mainstay, then. We could, I could eventually make him a sprite. Ignis, still there? Oh. Yep, I'm still here. Mm. A sprite. Isn't that like a little goblin thing? S the character model thing, actually. Rather. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm thinking Ignis completely I'm... just zoned out when we were mm -hmm. talking all this in joke stuff. So, no, so no, you know, that's fair enough. Yeah, I'll. I'm trying. I'm trying to keep up, but I'm a little behind the times here. So yeah. I think right now, currently, because Ethan's not showing up, I'm going to make it uh, first things first. It's going to be me, Kenshi, Casey, and then uh, Slicer, and then we have the four-man group, and then anybody else that we want to add in, we can add in later after we fight Ethan, and he'll be the first boss after being taken over by Evil. Yay! All right. Is that way I don't have to make him a sprite because there's so many evil sprites. Okay, and we're at uh, 25 minutes, so we're going to move on a little bit. Okay. So, uh, okay. Slicer, what were you doing? Uh, I finally managed to download at least XCOM and the Enemy Within DLC, which is great. I it haven't is. actually tried it yet, so I can't exactly say it's great, actually, but uh, whatever. I haven't had a whole lot of sleep. I've been playing this a lot. It's fun, but I swear to God, if a shotgun-using soldier misses a shot from three feet away, I just... Uh, that well, they computer's do all going the out the window. Mm. They're always missing. Mm. Yeah. Snipers are the shit in that game, by the way. They are, yeah. I was, I was if I lose my sniper, I, I instantly restart the mission. That's it. I was playing Enemies Within. Um, enemies Unknown, I mean. And it bored the hell out of me, to be perfectly honest. Really? Mm. Yeah, it was on the, it's, it's the PlayStation version, so I'm, I'm guessing it's... It, Better, easier to control your things with a mouse, because uh, um, it's more, it's more point and clickish. If you get what I mean. Um, yeah, well, I stole it from Blockbusters before they went bust. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. I've kept like four discs of theirs without having to pay fuck all. Lovely. Nice. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's a good game. I'll probably get back to it eventually. Mm. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Squee. Why is Kenshi saying squee? Oh. Right. One, one of the skills we levels oh. up is chakra. Of course it is. <laughs> it's actually right. a default skill too, so I'm not going to change it. Really? Yeah. Huh. For for the monk class, which is uh, Kenshi, which I changed to MMA fighter. So I didn't oh, change that sense. skill. Okay, and we're back from doing end jokes again. Uh, right. <laughs> really should have brought this up when we got a new so. guy. <laughs> Sorry, Ignis. Let me. Mm. Oh well. Um. Uh. So that's everything, Slicer. Yep, that's it. Okay. Really short uh, week. Ignis, let's keep it brief. And what have you been doing this week? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Now, um, I've been writing for. Past five days non stop. Seriously? Yep. Damn. I like you more now because you yep. heard, I heard you say that. Yeah, I've, I've uploaded about six chapters this week. Um, three of them for the same thing. But other than that, I really haven't been very busy. Wow. It's, well, it's just a week, the week through you know, New Year. Yeah, and after in fairness, yeah, every, 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 everything everything's a bit slowed, mm. you know, it's until you know, well, tomorrow Monday. Yeah. Still, it's a lot of writing. So, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's sort of got you know, mm. and then I have Top Gear or whatever's running reruns on TV in the background. Yeah, I get and, it. Yeah, I was soaking vodka for three days during the New yeah. Year's period. Well, I'm still drinking, mate. <laughs> Hmm. So, uh, as for me, what I've been doing this week, 
what have I been doing this week? Not much. I started writing a new chapter. That was something. Didn't get very far, but it's going, so that's a step in... Sometimes you just stop. It's a step in the right direction when I'm actually writing something, at least, even if in bits and pieces, rather than three months of nothing. So, yeah, that's a step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. And I've been watching the back catalogue from, like, online critics, so, like, Browse Held High. Just, like, reviews of art house films, which makes me feel a lot smarter after watching them. Even though I learn next to nothing and know almost nothing about <laughs> film at all. Still. Whatever. It's entertaining. And that's pretty much all I've been doing this week. That's not much. Uh, I hate New Year's. It's rubbish. Just as boring as Christmas. Yeah. Well, when, once you get a bit older, you find out that Christmas is, just gets tedious. Yep. Yeah. You, you, you enjoy you, you enjoy the meal, you enjoy the gifts, but the rest of it, you're like, oh, why don't I put these present, these um, parcels up and yeah, decorations and all that, you know, just having to get everything. And when you're a kid, it's exciting because ooh, presents, ooh, Santa and all that stuff. And when you're a teenager, you think ooh, presents, I can get this really expensive stuff from people because they're going to give me stuff because yeah. I'm a kid. Uh, and then when you you know, married and have kids, you've got, oh, I can enjoy this vicariously through my kids, and then there's the part where you're in your 20s and you're alone and miserable and no one's getting you anything for Christmas because you're a miserable old curmudgeon about the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> Does somebody need to give you a Christmas awesome. present, Casey? <laughs> yes. I need a Christmas present because I didn't get shit this year. <laughs> <laughs> or last year. Somebody gave you a PS4. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah, you don't get that, to that complain when that happens that to you. That was before Christmas. <laughs> that was way before Christmas. And I told that guy repeatedly he's awesome because of it. You want another PS4? Is that, is that what you're saying? I need a PS4 <laughs> and an Xbox One. And all the games to go with them. There's like seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll probably wait until things like um, the new Infamous and Uncharted and all that come out. Yeah. To buy a PS4 because... It's not worth bothering with otherwise, because all you got is these sports games, racing, and crap. It's all a bunch of shit, to be honest. Yeah, I'm still leaning towards the bad. Xbox One, to be honest. But obviously, I'm not getting anything until like the games. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll get the PS4 because that's cheaper, and it has my favorite, my favorite, you know, solo titles on it. Mm. Kingdom Hearts Three. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. Okay, so shall we move on to the next topic? Woo. Right, the next topic. So, I had a thought when I was writing a certain relationship in one of my stories about, you know that uh, whole thing in Naruto, like the pain arc, if you want to call it that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where... Hinata confesses her feelings to Naruto and then nothing happens with it for the rest yes. of the series. Yeah. Ridiculous. So, I had a thought about why that happened. So... They didn't have nowhere to go with it. Say you're a bloke, you're a fella, you're a dude, and this girl that you kind of know a little bit but you don't know very well says she... Loves you so much that and she's willing to she die is. for you, pretty much. Because that's what she's saying by jumping in front of this dude that could kill her with a finger flick. So, this happens, and you think, Oh shit, what the hell do I do about this? I know absolutely nothing about girls or relationships or women. How do I tell this girl that I don't feel the same way? Now, <laughs> if you're completely inexperienced with women... Hide and curl up in a corner. Yeah, what you might do is ignore it and hope it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. So You do yep. nothing. So this is my theory for why that why that whole thing happened the way it did. That's why the Naruto Hinata thing doesn't work. That's my evidence. I was so proud when I thought that up. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is kind of ridiculous. 
<laughs> I think that 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 isn't a real reason. Oh come on! And, and That's if logical. You, and if you consider he's not his personality, she's not likely to bring it up again. Could. Mm. Yeah, but that, that isn't no real reason. What if Hanata wasn't, you know, shy and timid? But she is. In the sa- in the same scenario, you know. But nah, that's not no real reason. I'm just saying it ain't full stop. Mm, for people that no have been rattle. in relationships and understand such things better than, say, Naruto, who yep. has been completely alone for the entirety of his life and the only females in his life, kind of treat him like shit most of the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel sorry for him there. But then I feel sorry that he doesn't just kill them all. Yeah, you've you've been, you've been shown to have a very interesting perspective on the Naruto universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, they're ninja, and they don't and they don't go out of their way to sneak up behind somebody and slit their throats. They, yeah. they jump out in front of each other. and Go, oh, I'm gonna fight you! And she, they did it first. There was some emphasis yeah. on tactics at first. Yeah, and then and stealth. I mean, they did in the, in the wave no, they off. Just... They did the very first thing was the hiding in a puddle thing. Yeah, it's it's also like um, Dragon Ball Z, you know. They don't just go out there, power up to their super maximum, and kick crap out of the enemy. They they, they wait, and it builds up and builds up and builds up until they're practically lost. They should just go out there, you know. Dragon Ball Z, Super Saiyan Four, you're dead. I'm not letting you, you know, transform into the most powerful thing out there, sort of thing. Mm. Well, it's a bit reductive and doesn't, yeah. doesn't make for a very good story, but yeah. The excuse for Dragon Ball Z <laughs> is that they're just warming up most of the time. Mm. And then they're like, okay, now we're actually ready to kill each other. Now, I've, I've seen the walk out there and power up to Super Saiyan 2 in a couple of seconds. <clears throat> you know? Yeah, you gotta keep your muscles ready to like beat the crap out of people, you know? If you're not ready, you could like, strain tra- something, you know? Well, you gotta <laughs> stretch them hands yeah. out before you go Super Saiyan. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta stretch. If it's, go- if it's Goku... <laughs> He, he's he's already stretched. He's training like every, every single second. So yeah, I I can't yeah, imagine no him ever being cooled down at, at, at all ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think he, it was easy for Freeze to transform giant, then transform into like Ridley Scott's alien, and then transform little? No, he had to stretch and get warmed up to do all of that. That's some serious body contortion. <laughs> you have well, a point. With, with, with Freeze, though, you have a, the other thing is it was his ego. He wanted to beat them in the lowest form yeah. possible. When that didn't happen, he was like, "Okay, maybe I can show you the second form." Then, like, he's like, "Okay, this form yeah, isn't working." Yeah, because Cola's constantly, I and mean, Cola's constantly in his form before that mm. mask thing comes on. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Freezer was just a dick. Yeah. An arrogant dick. Mo- most uh. of the most of the DBZ villains yeah. just had a really big ego. Except for like yep. Kid Buu, because Kid Buu was just like, "Hey, guess what? I'm Kid Buu. I destroyed the I destroyed Earth in two seconds." You see, yeah. Kid Buu is the only villain that I think Ignis would have liked because he actually did what he was supposed to do within the first ten seconds yeah. of his showing up. <laughs> he just shows up, kills everybody. He shows up, he kills everybody, <laughs> yeah. and then he goes starts to kill every other planet in the world, and in the galaxy, in the universe. Mm. Just starts yeah. killing everybody. He's he's a proper villain, though. <laughs> mm. no, he, he wasn't all talk. He didn't talk much at all. Yeah, you know, like Cell, he liked to gloat, and then gets his ass kicked. Then you know, Gohan and Goku gloat, and they get their asses kicked. They just like to gloat. That's it. Heroes and villains, throughout like the whole of anime, just like to gloat on each other. Mm. Not Broly. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No. Back to Broly. Okay. I just, I just. Well, he 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 gloated with raw power. <laughs> Which is an appropriate power way of gloating, gloating my him. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't need to say anything. Every punch was yeah, a fuck you. Really, yeah. is the impression I'm getting from Broly. <laughs> yeah. By the yeah. way, I'm tempted to, you know, call Anathema on Dragon Ball Z, because you talk about it every fucking week. But every time you talk about it, you end up shitting on it and saying how stupid it is. So <laughs> I'm okay with it, really. The idea was okay. You know, mm. it's it's like have, have you all seen Dragon Ball Evolution? Uh. The film. Yeah. Yes. Have you seen the I game of the film? I have not. Well, and I there, there was a game of the film. There was a yes, game of the was. film. <laughs> Why would they have done that? I don't know. <laughs> the film shit on the whole franchise. It was spectacular and how horrible it was. A- after it was all, it, it, it was even worse than the last Airbender. After that movie, no, came no, no, out. let's 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 not go crazy. After that movie came out, the uh, the <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution, Akira Toriyama released a statement saying they didn't talk to me at all about this movie. <laughs> 
I was like, like, oh, I'm so excited for this live action movie. They didn't come to me at all for any ideas, inspiration, where we should start, how should we do this in real life. They didn't do that at all. They just left me out. <laughs> the maker it's, of it's Dragon like they Ball. They left handed him to out. someone he's never even. They'd handed to someone who'd not even seen a picture. Mm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Goku going to high school. The high school high school, by the way, that's what it's called. That, that would have been okay if the Go, powers... Going to high school and okay, he's got bullies yeah. named Fuller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your favourite Dragon Ball character, Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> D- didn't he realise those names were just plays on everyday things? You know, mm. I, you know, I don't think he did. I'm going to say no, I don't think he did. You know, uh, the only time the, adult, the only time they ever really did high school was with uh, adult Gohan, or you know, uh, it was actually like a grown up sort of Gohan, and they even made the characters' names puns. Like one of the characters was Eraser. Yeah. Eraser. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> damn it, the sharp, sharpener. Yeah, sharpener. Right? Yeah. <laughs> eraser and sharp. It was an eraser and sharpener. <laughs> I, d- I don't think I noticed the pen. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Ball, so fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, I, f- I think there was a pep or something. There should have been a character named Ruler. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he could have been one of the evil aliens. <laughs> Just called Ruler the Ruler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds so stupid, but it also sounds so plausible for that reason. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Okay, we're done talking about Dragon Ball for the, like, 60th week in a row. I know we've only done 17 episodes Wait. as of this recording, but <laughs> still. Uh, I think we were in the Naruto Nui- earlier, weren't we? We went somewhere off course. We were. We do that a lot. We, there you go, just give Naruto the Dragon Ball powers and see where he runs with it. He's just as stupid as, go- go- as Goku. Mm. This This podcast could have easily been called Tangent Flux and it would have been equally... Accurate, you know. So yeah, uh, we could call this episode tangent flux. I'm not calling this tangent flux. We're still sticking with the fan flux is thing or fan flux something. Uh, uh, okay. I like that system. Uh, next topic. Because we have someone who actually knows something about this fandom, I figured we could discuss one of the let's call it the most oft maligned fandoms in existence. Um, it's actually one of the most popular on FFN. It's popular. It's also hated by ninety percent of the internet. So, yeah, Ignis, probably. why don't you tell us a little bit about Twilight? Okay, Twilight is about sparkly-assed vampires. <laughs> okay. Who, uh... who, who, <laughs> who, who, who only drink from animals, and. One of, one of the things that I don't get is that Carlisle, the, the, one of the lead characters, right, you know, the father of the whole vampire tribe, um, he, when he first got turned, right, this, this bugged me, and this is out of the whole of Twilight, which most of it bugged me, so. Okay. Right. Um, because he didn't want to feed on, on people. You know, he kept himself away, hiding in his little hidey hole, you know, suffering and everything. Not once did a man who's smart enough to become a doctor in modern day times, and not once did he even consider feeding on an animal until one came close to him. Hmm. Okay. You know, you know that, that, was, that bugged me. More than anything you know, else just, in the series? That, that bugged me almost as much as the sparkling. But... <laughs> um, that that did that did also also, also what? Oh. Hmm? You know they have all the eternity to do you know pretty much anything. They so go to high school over exactly. and over and over and over again. Hey. Hello. Uh. Yeah, I'm still I'm 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 still going. Somebody just interrupted and I didn't know what they said. No, it's uh, your audio just cut out for. Yeah. Like, I think everyone's did for a little bit. Um, yeah. All right, can you back? Oh, no. no. Yeah, lost. I'm here. Okay, it's at this point that I really wish we still had we had that technical difficulty music that thingy was supposed to be doing for us, but never mind. All right, and we're back in. What were you saying, Ignis? Because we dropped out there for a second. Okay, I'm I'm 
lost. I can't remember. Okay. Twilight's kind of shit. Yeah, Twilight is kind of shit. My intention for this whole but thing... It's, 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 it's okay to rip apart. Yeah, my intention for this whole it. segment was going to be, hey, we have this guy who's written about Twilight before. Maybe we could have a nice, fair and balanced perspective on it, considering everyone else on the podcast kind of shits on it all the time. Oh. All the time. That, okay, um, okay, okay, okay. that didn't I'll work try, out. I'll try, I'll, try, I'll, try, I'll try to be a bit more fair and honest. Okay. I liked Alice. There we go. Alice. Which <laughs> one was she? She was she was she was she was fun. She was the clairvoyant. Ah. The small right. one. Yeah. Okay. She was fun. There we go. Okay. Twilight, she, you had one good character. Congratulations. Yeah. It's it's more credit than anyone else on the internet is giving you. Except yeah. for the you know whole two hundred thousand stories on fanfiction on that. Yeah, most of them are all about how Ed was so awesome while he's stalking a poor innocent girl. Yeah. <laughs> and how how um, Jacob's so brilliant and buff when he's trying to rape her. But, yeah. Lovely. You know, if that's what girls like, you know, we can't exactly, you know... Well, we can, but... <laughs> <laughs> mm. You know, it's it's just... A fantasy world of nutcases. Yeah. Well, so much for um, a favourable perspective. Never mind. It's. You'd, you'd probably need a girl for that. Yeah. I wasn't entirely sure of your it's... gender until you actually started talking. That's why I said he uh. with a question mark in the chat. Oh. Uh. So, okay. it could have gone either way. I hadn't re- read the Twilight story, obviously, because, like I said, everyone here shits on Twilight all the time. So, uh... Alright, so... What appeals to you? Why do you write for the series, then? Because hmm. it's so easy to write fem slash for it. Ah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Okay, pretty then. much. <laughs> pretty much, it's an, e- it's an easy fem slash write, write. It's easy to put ma- to make the female characters gay. Huh. But it's easy as that, you know. There's so much slash on the net, I like to occasionally write some fem slash, or UE, or whatever you like to call it. Hmm. He's a simple man for a simple problem with simple solutions. Yep. Writing for a simple cause. Yep. It's kind of beautiful. <laughs> Brings a tear to my eye. Okay, so... Right, um, well, we've I solved think, that I think mystery. We can call that an end to the Twilight topic, I think. Uh, so the next topic is a... Let's call it a trope of mostly anime. You'll find it. Let me explain, is the name of the topic, because that's what happens in every anime or manga. Every single character has to just stop in the middle of a fight and say, let me explain how this works. Let me explain what I'm doing. Let me explain my grandmaster plan. Let me explain exactly how my abilities work so that you can figure out the exact way to defeat me. Yeah. (laughs) Not very clever. Yeah, we did talk about this once in an earlier yeah. episode. And, yeah, there's the perspective that it's for the audience's sake more than anyone else's. It's not... But, to be honest, most of the time I don't particularly care how their attack works. I can't exactly pull it off myself. Mm. So, there's no there's no point in telling me. <laughs> you know, it isn't like I'm going to pull a cummy hummy hum out my arse or something, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's... There's also more subtle ways to do it, other than, hey, I'm doing this, want to know how it works? Mm. It's a good one. There's yeah. always thought bubbles, there's always internal monologues to work with if you need to do that. But uh, like, there's, like, there's even more subtle ways than that. Like, say someone, like, someone's got, like, a weird way of moving and that makes their style work. And you can just see, like, a character while they're getting beat up, like, their eye twitches and they see something off that they haven't been catching for the entire fight. Mm. And they start picking up on it. There's subtle ways to do that instead of just having the dude explain why he's beating your ass and what he's doing yeah. that you can't stop. It it takes up half of the story as well. Half, you know, if it's a chapter, a chapter or episode, it takes up half of explaining crap that we don't care about. Mm. It's, it's called show, don't tell. It's the basic principle that yeah. they're missing in this case. Also, while we're at this mm. show, don't tell stuff. Um, at the beginning of chapter of of episodes of Naruto, the ending of Naruto, there is no need to overlay the other episodes, or especially at the end of an episode where they're in the middle of an attack for five minutes 
or just standing there doing nothing. Uh, have you have you seen that on? Um, I think the Dragon Dragon Ball Z was the worst at that. They're just standing there for five minutes at the end of the sh- show. It's like they just want to make it last twenty odd minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure I'm following. The the first thing I think of when I hear you mention Dragon Ball as a uh, as an example of them just standing there looking at each other is that um, back in the original Dragon Ball series, uh, the first time that really happened was uh, during the Baba arc, and this guy w- and Goku were standing and staring at each other, and this guy's like, I don't know what move I should do, because he looks like he has a perfect defense up, and if I go, he'll beat the crap out of me. And I-, I like to think of it as that, and that's how I like to quantify that in my mind, where they're just trying to assess each other's yeah. defenses. Yeah. But I really know it's really just them standing there. Mm. <laughs> It's, it's also, also Evange- was it Ev- Evangelion. Evangelion. That's the one. I can, never, I can never say that right when somebody asks mm. me. But um, that one, there had been times in elevators where they're just still standing there. This is halfway through the through the episode, and the, the sound's still going, and I'm and I'm clicking on my computer screen, thinking <laughs> thinking that something's froze somewhere along the line. Yeah. Why do they need to do that? Uh, I've got a, probably a better example, and that there's, would be the longest there's, there's still that... shot in anime history. <laughs> oh, it yeah. is literally the longest still shot in anime history when uh, Unit 1 is holding onto what's-his-face. I can't remember his name, and I really don't care. The human angel dude. And he's just yeah, holding on to him. And he's just holding on to him. And he's just holding on to him. And he's just holding on to him. <laughs> but, like, it has to be well over a minute, and then... <laughs> And then that's it. Just, just play some. I had no music. idea what was going on. I thought my computer had crashed or something. Just, just play some romantic <laughs> music. They're holding each other. Yeah. Oh, I hated that. That, show. Ho- that whole bit was probably the gayest bit in the whole show. <laughs> I hated that show all over. That was shit. Oh. I've been watching the new series movies. Oh yeah, the re whatever. The reboot, yes. yeah. rebuild. They're, sli- they're, su- they're somewhat better as far as I can see, but I haven't watched the one which has the gay angel in it yet. So gay angel, it's, fair enough. Yeah, the gay- that's what we're calling him, gay angel. Gay plus it's angel. Like angel, the gay angel. Uh, angel seventeen or something, I think. I we did not need a portmanteau name, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no offense to anybody who's you know mm. a gay angel. Gay angel. Um, Stop calling it that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, remember when we said that tangents happen a lot on this podcast? Yeah. Uh, so so that do. had to do with uh, let me explain because um um <coughs> because gay angels. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So are we done with that topic, or shall we move on? I guess. I mean, show not tell, right? Hmm. I don't really know how to go past gay angels. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's 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 the magic segue. It, it <laughs> works for... Yeah. It, it doesn't... Well. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, the next topic is... Calling your attacks. I like this. Some people apparently don't, like Ignis. But I like this because, you know... It, 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 it depends... In my opinion, what what powers you have? If you have magic, mm. you know, based around Latin and the language, mm. then that's okay. You know, shouting out at yeah. I mean, a lot of Western culture words are power, so it yeah. makes sense in that but, context. But when you're firing a laser beam out of your hands or what have you, there's no really need. There's no really need to say it. You know, Superman doesn't shout out "I beam attack." You know. When he's shooting his laser but vision. But wouldn't it be so much cooler if he did? <laughs> no. <laughs> laser vision. Laser eyes. Laser eyes. Laser eyes. Laser eyes. Laser eyes. If, if it was if it was an anime, it would probably would. Yeah, that'd be so yeah, much cooler. Shout out wind breath. And I want to say an example of calling your text. It kind of uh, where it's kind of necessary. The whole kamehameha type attack thing. At, at first, yeah. he he really seems to be saying that so he can focus his, himself because you know mm. Goku is not a very focused character. And that is literally part of the technique he learns because he watches Master Roshi. Sometimes, some watch that, do that. Yeah. yeah. 
sometimes you see these attacks and they're shooting them around willy nilly, you know, mm -hmm. with, 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 without saying anything. And then, they, and then when when they go in for the big kill, that's when that's when they most most of the time you know coming ha yeah. and the likes. And it's the power of the Kia. Yeah, there is actually. Yeah. Yeah, actually saying something, you know, a grunt or a yell, actually, you know, focuses and adds, boosts the power. You know, it a adds effect. extra that's force what to whatever you're doing. That's what they try to. I that's guess. what they try to teach you in like a lot of like. Yeah. Um, it's a karate technique or something. I don't know. Classes and things. Yeah. And I don't do that. I never did that. I'd rather be silent when I'm hitting things. Mm. Yeah, they're the ones supposed to be doing the screaming. <laughs> That's... Yeah. <laughs> Can't really argue with that, but yeah. How will, I, how will I hear my own kick land if I'm yelling while I'm throwing it? I need to hear my bone impact off of you somehow. God damn yeah. it. Don't say... Hmm. You reminded me of that... Mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if a sniper's sitting up in the window ready to kill someone, they don't go, shoot! Headshot! <laughs> Pow! You know, yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, I would kind of want to do yeah, that. I, I would, totally. I couldn't, but I would love to. Yeah. You could do it if you're playing, you know, Battlefield or something. My brother no, does I mean, that. Real now, life. Yeah. Actually. Real <laughs> life, you totally just go, boom, headshot. And I'd love to yeah. do that, but Completely I'd give away your position, that. but it would be so fucking cool. Yeah, if you're... Yeah. N normal, normal people who say, for example, <laughs> I want to say get magical powers. It's it'll be fun to just say your attack. Yeah, yeah. I would say my attacks all the time I mean, if I had powers. You don't need make, to. I would make attacks. You don't need to, but it's 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 a little bit entertaining to do it. Hmm. Name 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 your spell something different, just so <laughs> people in English English could you know understand it. Like I, 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 <laughs> you I'll, know, inst instead of the expelliarmus, I'll shout out. Disarming you. <laughs> oh, I want to name um or or uh in or is this stupid. a zombie? Uh, when he becomes a when Ayubu somehow becomes an a maho shoujo through a whole bunch of weird plot storytelling. There's a move called missile chain kick where he jumps up and he looks like he's going to do a kick, but he really swings a chainsaw at them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're like that's not a kick. <clears throat> Being sliced in half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Misleading uh... people through shouting your attack. Mm. There's uh, Hunter. Hunter actually kind of subverts this a little bit. So, like, they have this. Their de facto magic is called Nen. And uh, basically, what you can do is you can train yourself to have this ability, and then you could make that ability stronger by assigning conditions to it. Like, I can only use this ability on this certain group of people, type mm. thing. Yeah. So, in that show. What the main character accidentally does, every time he uses his attack that he's created, he calls the name of it. So what he unintentionally does is creates a condition on his attack that he has to say the name before he uses it. So that, I don't know, I thought I'd mention that, it seemed an interesting way to take it. I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah. Just that make happens, the name, just make yeah, the name something easy fine. and something, uh, yeah. Something that they no, I want to make it. So I want no. I want to make it something that you're gonna say, "Huh, that's a really cool name for an attack." Before you die, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Just number them. That's the reason it exists as a trope because people wanted people to remember their cool ass attack yeah. names. So they make their characters say them. <laughs> Galaxy Absolutely. smashing flaming core throw. <laughs> Basically, mm. and sometimes it works. I either Kamehameha, Sometimes, most of the time, it does not work. Oh, the bad guy's just thrown back and he's bleeding from the mouth and he's just like, ah, but in his head he's like, damn, that was a cool name attack. <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't think, I think he's thinking, oh shit, I've just been killed. Yeah, but, you know, a man can dream. <laughs> or, ah, <laughs> you know, just a, just a constant scream in his head. Mm. Uh, there, mm. But then again, you wouldn't want to get killed by something called shit your pants gun. You, or or, or ridi ridiculous attack like um, a heart attack from Naruto's transformation, the sexy jutsu. Mm. I'm gonna create an attack called Testicular Sound Express. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everyone will know its name before they die. <laughs> just say, just <laughs> change that last word to explosion, and we might have something. 
sound ex <laughs> hmm. but I want to okay. I want to mention hmm. just uh, two examples of characters I'm going back to Dragon Ball for this but uh, Frieza he has he never really says any of his moves like he'll just ra he'll just he just randomly copies uh, Krillin's uh, destructive disc he just throws like three of them doesn't even say it he just shoots the laser beam out of his hand hey. he doesn't even say it he imp he improved the destructor disc yeah he improved it it charged yeah. it charged after him yeah and he does the supernova attack but he never names it you know and the only reason we even have probably because he wasn't listening the first time it went out the only reason we have the the names maybe he needed a hearing aid <laughs> the only reason we have the names for those attacks is because of the games and stuff. And yeah, the, you know, alternate forms of media. So that's that's an interesting way to do it. Is you can have your villains not say their attacks, and just be like, okay, I'm a villain. I'll just do it. And another example of just an overly uh, grandiose way of saying your attack is uh, in uh, DBZ. There's a uh, Future Trunks, and he does uh, the move Burning Attack. He does all these hand motions, like arm motions. And he's like, uh, <laughs> like he's doing some sort of jutsu or something. He's like Burning Attack. Just over the top, like oh yeah, I'll, I'll remember that one. As many, I thought, I thought yeah. Over, yeah, over the top. Mm -hmm. As many hand motions as he can, as if he was like part ninja, you know. I'm gonna say yeah. right now that burning attack is the main reason I picked Future Trunks in the early Budokai games. Just so maybe it's it super making cool. It is super cool. Friction but it's a little, it's, it's just a little bit over. The top. Friction with the air to make it burn, you know. It, it's maybe that was it's one of the coolest attacks, but you when you have it like. Take uh, like all these different hand moves. Like three seconds. You've got ten seconds of hand moves. Yeah, just ten <laughs> seconds of hand moves to do one attack. That's a little bit over the top, especially when the name is only like two words. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. Uh, Let's move on quickly. Hurry yeah. on. All right. Next topic is cannon breaking arcs. Yeah, we're skipping over that other one, by the way. Totally not doing that. That's, too, that's a terrible joke. Uh, <laughs> cannon breaking arcs, which is um, well, I've it's basically mind. it's it's important for something if you're a fan fiction writer because right. most yeah. of the time fan fiction writers will most of them usually don't deviate too much from the main storyline of whatever they're writing. Yeah. More often than not, they make an effort to make sure that they don't deviate, so they don't have to write too much new. It's a lot of effort to complete. To create something completely original, even if it's based on another I story, I think it's even more effort to keep it so close. Mm. Yeah, it's like kind of hard when you're changing yeah. things to try to and, stick close. And you know, if, if I wanted to read canon, you know, I'll put out my old yeah. books and read canon, you know. But mm. canon breaking arcs are pretty much they're the point in uh, their points in the actual widely accepted canon universe where if you change something that happened there, you pretty much broken the rest of the canon storyline. You can't go back on track. Hmm. So you have to write something different. You can, you so Voldemort it, it, dies, for example. No, Voldemort gets resurrected in first year with the Philosopher's Stone. Or in Naruto, I suppose, if Pain were to die early on and Toby were to take over really early, I guess. Then everyone would lose, probably, because Naruto wouldn't have had all those other fights. Mm, possibly, but yeah. that's where you take the story in a different direction. So, yeah. but if somebody actually trained him from the get-go, he would have probably been super powerful by the time you know Zabuza got around. Oh, tell you what, uh, better example: Itachi dies early. Sasuke doesn't. Oh yeah. If, if Itachi dies him. before the big time skip, before Sasuke leaves. I have no idea what would happen then. I honestly don't. So see, um, Sasuke would get everything, and Naruto would be left in the dumps. Quite possibly, that's one way so, it could so go. Pre pre mu pretty much how it was going in the first place when he was still there. Hmm. So um, I'm just thinking. Uh, if, uh, I've got actually a few of these uh, cannon breaking arcs. I've got several planned, and I'm not sure. if would M1 N470 count as a canon breaking arc? Just from the it's kind of still going the same way. It, it kind of is, but at the same time, there's non-canon things happening and changing. 
you know? Maybe, but it's still staying mostly on the same tracks. I mean, you still yeah. had the first big shadow fight. Yeah, well, the shadow fights, I can't really change the, the time of. Well, you, did, you didn't change the time of, you didn't change how the battle happened at all. Yeah. The battle didn't have to happen. Mm. Well, that's probably going to be... Uh, it's, it's definitely going to be changing by the next one. I've got mm. tons of uh, cannon changing arcs planned, including... Uh, one that happens at Yakushima, which is going to change crap ton. That I'm excited for. Yeah. But, okay. yeah. So, yeah. I haven't actually done any of these yet. Yeah, I don't think. I, I think if you're going to do a cannon breaking arc, you either uh, <coughs> start going with the cannon from the get go, and then you just gradually break away until you can do one of these. Or you just. But just because. Start you from the get go. But just because the likes of Voldemort or someone comes back in first year doesn't mean that you can't still go along with the canon stories. Yeah. Mm. If, if, you, if you think about it, you know, Chamber of Secrets still could potentially happen. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not likely, because, you know, Lucius isn't, you know, likely going to give the diary away, you know, while his master's around to smack him in the head. Time, why the, why or, the fuck are you giving away one of my most precious possessions for the sake yeah. of, you know, fucking with some random little girl? Yeah, <coughs> yeah, but third, third or fourth year could still potentially happen. The way the way it did, well, it would happen in in a in a different way because Voldemort's back, of course. You know, killing people and stuff. If, Mo if Voldemort's back, then Pettigrew would probably go back to him. In yeah. which case, the whole serious thing probably wouldn't happen the same way because Pettigrew would have been gone and wouldn't have yeah. been in the newspaper article. But 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 but, but Sirius would have found out about Voldemort's re return and would have wanted to go and help Harry instead of getting his vengeance on Pettigrew. And that probably would have happened sooner. Yeah. But it would have still been all there with the Dementors and all that crap. It would have probably, yeah, it could have happened in second year. Hmm. You know, but it's still all there. It's argu it's it's happening twisted and twisted and twisted in new ways, I suppose. It's arguable a little Butterfly bit. Butterfly effect, really. Uh, yeah. It depends how you want yeah. it. You know. If, if you want, you know second year to be like third year but with Voldemort on the loose of course yeah and there, there are other things that <coughs> would happen they might, they might happen in different chrono chronological order but mm. a lot of it still can happen I do remember reading one story that did actually have pretty much that scenario with Voldemort getting res resurrected in first year not quite in the generic way it was more Voldemort gets resurrected by his spirit um, possessing a dragon. If, oh, okay, so it was if you remember, Hagrid had a dragon the first year. Oh, yeah. Norbert. That dragon. Yeah. That just <laughs> doesn't sound like it has any sense to it. That, mm. the it first was interesting. Thing I, the first thing I thought of when you said him possessing a dragon, I thought of Smog. Smog. Mm. Smog. Cause I just saw that movie like the other day. The new Hobbit thing. I really feel like it should be pronounced Smog. I'm gonna kind of smog. pronounce it that way I think, anyway. I think Smog sounds cooler. It does, but it sounds like you're trying to give it a cool name rather than just calling it Smog. Which is it was. how it's <laughs> spelled. Smog. 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 It should be Smog. Smog is Smog and Smog. Smog. It's fun to I say. Know, that. I don't intend to watch it. <laughs> Smaug. Uh, I'm easily entertained. Uh, okay, uh, have we got anything else to say for Cannon Breaking Arcs? <clears throat> um, no, I don't think. Yeah, so. if, if 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 people aren't doing them, then they shouldn't be writing. That's that's be, an inflammatory be, comment. Okay, uh, you gonna? They should be. Nah, if they shouldn't be. If they if they aren't breaking things apart and doing them their own way. Mm. Then they they, sh they shouldn't be right because I've, I've came across loads and loads and loads that <laughs> stick so close to canon. I just want to tear my freaking hair out mm. or um, kill Ron. <laughs> but that's probably just because I really hate him. We personally, God he, damn it. <laughs> personally, I I hate sticking I just, to canon too much because you know you can you can sort of follow the uh, the main sort of. The plot, plot the main until plot, you can uh, really get all these things that you're setting up to actually work and break away into your own uh, plot. But sticking to 
every single little event that happened makes it just like the canon. And there's no point in reading it then. I get, yeah. I get that. It's a little far to say if you're not completely derailing the plot, then you should stop writing. That's a little, yeah. that's a little much. But I well, get, I get the point you're making in that if you don't mm-hmm. try anything new, then what's the point? Because there, there are some oh. fan fictions that will focus around aspects of the canon that were not even talked upon or touched upon much. Mm-hmm. So rather, you know, you can do fan fiction because you want to change everything. Or because you want to talk about things that haven't been talked about, mm. or do things that might have happened, rather than just changing everything. Yeah. So, for example, you could, um, off the top of my head, if you were writing a Harry Potter fic and you stuck mostly to canon, but it wasn't focused on Harry, Hermione, Ron, Dumbledore, whatever. It was say focused on Remus and Tonks, and their relationship That's- and how that developed and stuff, and gave that a bit more spotlight so it feels a bit more real than it that was. Sort of things, that, that sort of thing's okay because, you know, it's yeah. different, you know. It, it isn't, you know, spoken about in yeah. canon. But when when they're, you know, Harry's your main character, um, Ginny's love interest, Hermione's the nerd who follows him around, Ron's, Ron's the bad smell. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard a more yeah. appropriate description. But, you know, go, go, going along like that, constantly over and over again, you know. They, they normally start around about fourth, maybe fifth year, and then just carry on going away the way Canon did, with little bits changed here and there, and added in their own Mary Sue's or Gary Stews, who, you know, have nothing wrong with them, or are well, eternally classy. And, you know, I, I, I read this one book on Harry Potter fanfiction dot com. I think that's what it's called. I don't know. Well, I know the same. Well, anyway, so yeah. Right, which was um, canon based after um, the end of seventh year right, where Ginny was popping out kids every other fucking day wow. and they couldn't they couldn't even they could they could they couldn't even keep their names right and what 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 makes this stick to my mind is when I had a look at their reviews they had tons of them None of them were negative. Yeah. And I, I, I was like, "What the? F-? There are people on here <laughs> who work really hard to make things stick, and to, uh, and to at least tell a story. And there's you getting all of these, you know, encouraging comments telling you to carry on doing like this. And yeah. You just, you just have to. Wa- you know, and that's trying. That's trying to stick to you know, canon-ish. Yeah. But. Nobody wants to read that, really. No real mm, person. I see. This is why I really appreciate the critical reviews and the ones that actually put effort in saying what they like yeah. and don't like, because the ones that just say "Yay, I like this story" could be written for something that's got spelling mistakes in every word. Every word is in the wrong place in a sentence, and people would still say this is the best thing I've ever read. Mm-hmm. I'm not. It's just. It's worthless. It's just crazy. There's not much point in that. Mm. Well, that was a tangent. Oh, well. Yay! Uh, hey, hey Ignis, off, you made off, your off. first tangent. Yeah. I think that makes you officially one of us. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> yeah. We all do it. Yeah. Repeatedly. Mm. Yeah. Don't even get me started on Batman. Yeah, they'll get boring. Hey. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hear that at all? Somebody, somebody said something about Batman. I missed it. No, it was probably oh, for right. the best. Uh, okay. Probably for the best. Yeah, know. Zero wasn't here yeah. for that bit. I'm glad of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually glad you were late there, Zero. Mm. I'm Batman. <laughs> no. That is probably the most talked about part of the Batman movies. He's left. He's. I think. I think the Batman movies have left a definite impression upon the people of the world, so people can ask where somebody is without somebody Batmaning back to them. <sighs> it apparently left an impression on you, Zero. There, there was one part I was watching in The Hobbit, right? The Desolation of Smog, when uh, Gandalf was holding his staff back to these guys, and that he was asking with Sauron, and he was like, "Where is he?" And then I said to my dad, "Hey, Gandalf is Batman." So Gandalf was like, "Where is he?" In my mind. <laughs> of course he was. Hey, hey. <laughs> Gandalf and Batman fused together. I'd, I'd, I'd read that fan fiction. 
That don't. Gun man. Gun man. Gun man. God damn it. I hate you, Zero. Love you too. Alright. Then throw down and rob Robin. Oh, that, that sounds gross. <laughs> Robin. <laughs> or Bilbo and Robin. Bilbin. Roto. Roto. <laughs> what are we talking about? I don't know anymore. <laughs> no uh, idea. Bilbo. AUs. Between AUs. Let's. let's <laughs> AUs. What? Uh, Ignis, Gandalf give us your AU. perspective on AUs because uh, we've pretty much done it already. Everyone else, so. Ignis? Skip that one for now? Or... Oh. What were we going? We AUs. We want your perspective since AUs. everyone else has already pretty much done theirs in previous episodes. <sighs> AUs are awesome. There we go. Done. Well, okay. Uh, um, AU, <laughs> AU, <laughs> yeah, AUs are, are, are pretty good because. They break away from canon completely um, into other worlds, especially crossovers. <clears throat> you know, where um, especially with Harry Potter and um, DC or Marvel, they do pretty well. But without you guys talking, I'm lost. Okay, it explains. Um, I'm pretty okay. I'm trying to but jump all over going? the AUs right now. Yeah, I'll go. I'll say. All right. I'm trying to jump in. I'm trying to jump deep in the AU universe right now because I'm writing like a Naruto fan fiction where the hidden villages were never created. Oh yeah, I remember. And I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Great clan days. Where it's all the Senju oh, versus the Uchiha versus the Uzumaki versus the uh, I've forgotten the names of the rest of the clans. The Nara. Um, uh, whatever you could find in cloud or a uh, sand. Oh, sand! It's the sand nomads rather than like any clans or anything. That was that was a good. That was a nice touch, I guess. So that's a story. Mm. You've already published. It's already yeah. It's already started. <clears throat> it's like I think eleven chapters in. All right, I'll have to. Find yeah, that just out then. Oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Pretty much anything by Kenji six one eight is a good story. Mm. Mm. Don't put that evil on me, <laughs> except for the things that aren't. But shh. There's like two of them <laughs> that I would say give them this. You know, I was thinking of trying a Naruto where it's all in the modern era. Yeah, he did one know, of those. Because um, I I started one, but it didn't turn out as good as I would have hoped. Yeah. Where they're, they're instead of ninja villages, they're a huge, massive metropolises. Um, you know, let me guess, it was mercenary corporations or something that you were planning on doing, yes? Oh, I was, I was, I was, I was um, no, it was, it was more of um, uh, military cities sort of thing. <coughs> I had, originally, I was thinking of um, you know, <coughs> big corporations and... Um, you know, ruling the world sort of thing, like, um, was it? I can't remember. There, 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 was, there was a movie that gave me the idea where corporations ruled the world and... Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stories like that. Yeah, but it was, it was when I was watching that, but I changed my mind, because I like the Hakagis and all that stuff, mm. so... But ninjas I, are a fun concept, yeah. you can't really argue with yeah. that. So Yeah. But ninjas with guns... That's that has to be even more cool. Yeah. Uh, shoot, shooting bullets out of the air. But then you just get wanted. Well, like, so. like, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like, like that. Well, like that guy from um, X. From what was it? Wolverine. With dead, who what? Chop, Agent. Chopped him with a sword. What? Uh, Deadpool. Yeah. yeah. The, well, before he was, before he was, you know, probably all messed up and stuff. Wade. Wade Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. His name's Wade Wilson. Not hey? to be yeah, yeah Slade Wade Wilson, Wil also known as Deathstroke. Is that different yeah. characters? They're different. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. Deadpool and I mean, I know Slade Wilson yeah. because I watch Arrow. And that's a good show, by the way. And people should yeah. watch that. But no, I yeah, watch it's great show, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like to think of Deadpool. I, I, I also watch Agents of Shield. Yes, I watch yeah. that too. It's, it's it's not as good as Arrow, mm. but it's still pretty. Pretty nice mm. to watch. I, I like to think of Deadpool Plus, as a parody of Deathstroke. What? 
I like to think of Deadpool as a parody of Deathstroke. Mm, At least he started that. out as one. Deadpool's kind of insane. Yeah. Mm. But if you've been reading the comics, he's been getting actually character development now. And it's going really good, actually. Mm. Yeah. Well, I know next to nothing about comics. Pretty much everything I know about comics has come from either watching Linkara's show or, uh, I don't know, TV and films. So well, that's unfortunate. Uh, I guess. I mean, I do like Green Lantern. Of like all superheroes, I probably like Green Lantern the most. So yeah. I, I still haven't gotten around to watching the fifth, uh, reading the um, what the new Justice League Fifty Two. Yeah. 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 I I downloaded the first twelve books. I was uh, reading. Um, uh, you, you guys ever read Spider Man or anything like that? No. I saw Spider Man. I saw Spider Man comic yesterday in. Asda. I uh, decided. So I decided to get along <laughs> with reading Spider Man once they un revealed the superior Spider Man, where Doctor Octopus is inside. Uh, oh yeah. Peter Parker's brain. He has control of it. Yeah. So Doc Ock is Spider Man. It's uh, it's really good. Yeah. I really like it. He's, so is it is it a hero? He or tries not? to be a better hero than Spider Man. Mm. And that in he that includes uh, blackmailing the mayor, uh, creating a whole bunch, creating a whole secret base, having tons and tons of little spider bots watching the entire city for any crime, having a bunch of henchmen, having creating four robotic spider arms to come out of his back. Naturally. You know, mm. Naturally. Okay. <laughs> So he's a, a not a not quite a hero. No, he's mm. no. He he tries to be a hero, except you know, kills a few villains. Just straight Which up kills them. A few. Arguable whether that's heroic or not. He's a pra he's a pragmatic <coughs> hero. Yeah. It, it depends what kind of comic. Depends on whether you can kill or not. Like you know, Blade gets away with killing everyone. Mm. You know, Punisher, Punisher gets away with killing everyone. I need to read more Punisher. <laughs> Oh, Punisher. I, I haven't seen anything Punisher since the second movie flopped. The first one flopped too, come to think of it. Uh, oh, Warzone. The only thing I remember from Warzone is like the scene where those three Irish dudes were like jumping across the rooftop and one of them tries to jump and just gets blown apart with a rocket launcher. <laughs> mid jump. Yeah. <laughs> that was a scene. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing to me. Oh, so Superman did his own share of mass murder in the new movie. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, when you when you're talking, it's more the, realistic as far as collateral damage goes. When you've got two yeah. superhumans fighting in the middle of a city. Well, you know what? He didn't even he didn't even seem to give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Didn't consider it. My dad, my dad points out in the original Superman movies when they were going to have a big fight, Superman led all the people out of the city first. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, there, there's a whole moon up there in space that they could fight on yeah. and break apart as much as they well, like. Well, not as and much as they like. I mean, that would fuck oh, up the tires. Oh, yeah. And they'd be like, mm, oh, yeah, that'd be bad. But, uh, well, they can they can fuck it up as much as they, you know, screwed up Metropolis, mm -hmm. at least, you know. Uh, one thing that I... But right at the end, he, he snaps Zod's yeah. neck for, like, four different people, for four people he doesn't know when he's killed all those other people. The, here, here's here's you know? one thing that, like, I, I read the uh, how it should have ended for... I, I or I, I saw the watch the how it should have ended oh, thing. I, I watched that. Too. Why didn't he throw Zod? Why didn't he use that freeze breath that he apparently forgot he had on Zod yeah. and stop him from moving? Why didn't he? I don't know. Uh, turn Zod's head. If he could, if he had enough strength to break Zod's neck, he could turn his head a little bit more. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Or put his hand over the laser. Well, yeah. That. Mm. Okay. You know. <laughs> wouldn't exactly burn his hand off would he? okay <laughs> the uh you know the sun the sun was out it was a bright day he's been recharged constantly kicked Zod you know. to the ground how about that yeah <laughs> the, the dramatic impact of that scene is waning with every single explanation that you came up with so um <laughs> uh why not hmm. you tell the people to move or duck under the lasers Zod can't move Linear, or get out of the right. corner or like hold yeah. his head and slow it down you could you could limbo yeah. under the lasers you literally can <laughs> if you wouldn't even need to limbo if if it's tall enough for you to just crouch down stopping Zod's head from moving anywhere but left or right then they can just go underneath the laser 
Mm, yeah. They could have made him look up. They could go, they could come towards Superman, and so they end up behind Superman and behind Zod, and Zod's like, oh crap, I can't do anything yeah. now. Or Superman could have just let him laser beam their heads off. He let everybody else die. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was at least sixty percent spot that, responsible for everyone else dying in that yeah. fight. Everyone that died in that city during that fight, he was probably sixty percent responsible for you the fake towers. Yeah. That, that was a few people in the city he saved. Yeah. yeah, that ran off. That probably died anyways. You might as well just you, not bother. You know, uh, DC, I think, said that. Oh, in the next movie, he's going to deal with the repercussions of what happened there. And I'm like, well, yeah, because the Batman. Yeah, coming Batman's going to go and punch him with kryptonite. Beat him up. Yeah. Well, come on, let, let's face it. The Batman's going to kick his ass. <laughs> he's going to... First he's going to outsmart Cause, him. Cause, uh, yeah. And then he's going to well, beat the crap out of him. Yeah, kick yeah. his ass. With kryptonite-powered guns yeah. or yeah, whatever. You know. So, um... AUs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, well, technically, Man of Steel is an AU to the original Superman I guess. Series, so. If you... Mm. Okay, that's a that's a reach in logic, but okay, we'll we'll accept it for the sake of not okay. looking like complete charlatans as far as <laughs> staying on topic goes. Um, so we'll move on to uh, the question that we got that we failed to answer last week because uh, shut up. I hadn't because said anything, things. and I was I was literally going to stop myself from saying anything. So it's your fault. Um, what was the question? I forgot. It was. Uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot. Dem demonic whack demonic whack a yeah. yes it was the thing with uh, oh you're fighting this enemy oh you almost won and then he gets rescued by this other guy who shows up and tags out so he you're fighting the new guy now oh the new guy mm. you're pulling it out and you're fighting and you're winning and then the new guy gets tagged out by his uh, boss and oh this this is going to be tough because this guy's stronger than you but ooh, you Corporate you battle. pull out all of your willpower and strength, and ah, and you win. And then he gets rescued and teleported or transported away by the these true, three other guys villain. that have just shown up, and they're gonna kick your ass because this, it's three on one now, and they're all a little bit stronger than you, but not too much because that would be ridiculous and not realistic at all. So you fight, and you, you know, you almost, you, you're on your last legs, but you still pull it out in the end, and then they just bugger off and two of them get away but you get one but they're still the two or something yeah, th sure why not th there's a point when you have a limit to your stamina at least <laughs> <laughs> okay my, my example went a little bit far in uh <laughs> yeah but you, you get what I mean you, you don't get any end to the conflict because the enemy always gets away or you always let them get away or someone always rescues them at the last minute. It's like Lex Luthor. He's always getting away. Yeah, but Superman would always let him get away because he wouldn't kill him anyway. Yeah, that was more Superman being a bitch. Yeah. If they just killed all their villains, then they would never come back. It's like the Joker. Batman should have just blown him up the first day he met him. Uh, Pretty magic much. of hindsight, but yes, that's true. Because <clears throat> Joker kills millions of people over the course of his life. <laughs> And the Batman doesn't think to just shove a grenade down his gob. I mean, pretty much the whole thing is like, people do that, people don't kill off their villains because they keep thinking, oh, I can do this and this with them, or they're just afraid to get rid of characters. Yeah, I mean, it's a fair thought that if you think, oh, this villain's really popular, if I get rid of him, I might not be able to come up with a villain as good as this one. So if I get rid of him, then I lose my meal yeah, ticket. you just resurrect them. Just bring them back to life. Yeah, but then that has its own problems of like, oh, I think half, I think half of Marvel have died at one point. So half of DC been resurrected. The yeah. Batman's died. They've also become Superman's died. For that though, yeah. I think pretty much all of the Green Lanterns have died at some point, or sort of half died and come back to life, and then yeah, because I, I, I think half, of, loads of them were um, turned into Black yep. Lanterns when they were killed, weren't they, and then resurrected with these. Silver Lights of the White Lantern Corps. Yeah. Like, if, like, the thing is, I'm telling the story with a definite ending in mind, someone's gotta go. Mm. Like, you gotta get people out of the way and clear this shit out yeah. for a finish. 
You can't leave everyone alive. Someone's got to go. It's like you couldn't have left Voldemort alive. Oh no, definitely not. Because that would have been complete. You know, no resolution whatsoever. And then 19 years later, it wouldn't have happened, which probably would have been a good thing. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> then 19 years later, I think I, I watched I watched it on the movie. And it just didn't sit right. It just didn't seem like a part of the movie. It shouldn't have been there. I checked out of the Harry Potter franchise after... What was the one after Goblet of Fire? Uh, Order of the Phoenix. Um, yeah. I stopped right after that. Yeah. That that was a good choice on your part. I thought the, the fourth form was probably the best. Yeah, pretty much. I agree with that. Because he had everything you needed, and it had dragons, had magic, had an evil bad guy coming back to life to kill, to you know, try and kill the mm. protagonist. Pretty much everything mm. you need in a in a good book, in a good. Oh, it even yeah, had a tournament arc, technically. I love Goblin yeah. Fire. No, the first two movies were the best out of the movies, though. The others, they were all lacking something. Probably time, because. They're all condensed, and they seem to expect you to have read the books first. Mm. You know, I've, I'd read all the books before I watched the f fourth one. But you know, if if I if I hadn't, you know, read the books after I watched the first movie, I wouldn't have had a clue what's going on. Yeah, it shouldn't be a requirement to read the books for to enjoy a movie. No. It's like the Percy Jackson movies too, both of them. You're required to read the books before you actually have a clue what the hell's going on. I've only seen the first one, and that one was entertaining, but yeah, I did feel lost at times. Yeah. Yeah, th th I, I watched the first one, had to read the books because it seemed like a good concept, good idea. Books were awesome. You know. But the movies just, they lack, they lack time. Or they lack a good enough director to put all the good, all the things you need to know in, without losing all of the adventure and action. Mm. And um, yeah, I'm still reading the Heroes of Olympus. I'm on the latest book. How many are there in that series, anyway? Um, well, there's five in the first. There's four in the second series so far. Mm. I think about it right. Yeah. I apologize yeah. for checking out, by the way. I was uh, responding to a review who was complaining about me using the word arse when the characters are Japanese and thus not speaking English, and that thus would be using the <laughs> Japanese equivalent of the word arse. And even then, the characters in that story would be speaking British English anyway, and thus wouldn't be using the word ass. I can ever. only imagine what you responded with. Because <laughs> I heard your fingers what? clacking. I use the word ass, A-S-S, all the time. People bitch at you if you don't. Ass. Well, ass just sounds too posh. It sounds English. Nobody says ass. Yeah, but no, nobody even in England says ass. I say ass. They're too, la they're, they're too lazy. No, nah, it's too lazy. I just say ass. It's just ass, ass, ass. Okay, all right. See That's a song, isn't it? See how many times we could say <laughs> ass. <laughs> ass, ass, enough ass. Dog ass. <laughs> Alright, I'm uh, going to try and reel this thing back on the course. What course? Like, Do I've, we have a course? Like, we had a course, not, not, but we... I've, I've, actually, I've actually had reviews, mm. right? You s saying that I spell things like rumour wrong, because uh, I saw spelling the them U-O-R. Mm. That's how you spell it, yanks. <laughs> of course it is. I understand. It, it's our language. It's our language, man. It's our language. It's named for us. We define yeah, what the English. language is. <laughs> you want to make your own language? You can go do that. Can't Don't bitch at us for you using our language wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you? We need to stay the course. We're getting I'm too trying. In, too far into attention. Stay the course. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. I think. I think that it's in stories. In, in fan fiction, there's no excuse for demonic whack-a-mole because your story has to end at some point. <laughs> I'm not, sure, I'm not sure whether I came across it that much. You never come across someone that just absolutely refused to let their villains get any final... No, because mo most of the stories have never came that far that you've got to the yep. villain battle so far, and they've left them for two or three years, and you're like, 
well that was pretty good yeah. but <laughs> and I'm probably guilty of that myself yeah likewise about 98 stories so I've started going back over a lot of my stories and reimagining them. Yeah, you go back to the stuff that you wrote I've, early on and you think, oh my god, yeah. this was shit. I have, I have my first ever attempt looks like a two-year-old just tapped away at my yep. keyboard. <laughs> I'm certain and it wasn't that awful. <laughs> but believe me, the tents were so all over the place. By the way, how old are you? I mean, I know you've been writing for like six, seven years. How old are you? Older than all of you. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how old all of you are, right. so... I'm 22. Right. I'm turning 25 next month. 21. Woo. Yeah, I'm older okay. than all of you. <laughs> fair enough. So, uh, seven years ago you were writing like a two-year-old. This is interesting information. Yeah. Well, no, I started long before I started actually publishing. Oh, fair enough. Well, everyone started somewhere anyway. Yeah. Because, as, as I said, it was the Order of the Phoenix by Rustbite. Yeah, I said it right that time. That um, encouraged me to give it a shot myself. And I wrote a really, really long thing that must have been about 700,000 words or something. And I lost it, Ooh, most of it, at least. That's, I know. that's harsh. But it, it, was, it, it was really lame. But I was planning to go back over it, see what I could just, you know, rip out and maybe turn yeah, it into a story. Try and salvage it. I lo- yeah, I lost, I lost it with my laptop. It died. Mm. Uh, I know that and feel. I've, I've, lo- I've lost a few, st- I've lost a few stories from two different laptops that died. So now I'm using the cloud to, the cloud. You know, make sure nothing, nothing's lost. Uh, that's that's an optimistic viewpoint. But uh, good for you. Well, I, I, I use two different clouds. I, I use the Dropbox and the Windows one. Okay. Can't remember what it's called. All right. Uh, I think. Oh, and and I got and I got some in Dive. I think is it Dive or Drive or Google, whatever it is. Okay. I uh I think we we can move on to the last topic, which as always is uh, recommendations. So uh, who wants to go first? Uh, I can go. I guess I got the two of them. So. Alright. Uh, first one, I forgot the name last week, but it's NBH, and it's um, a very simple change. It's just Naruto fights Kin instead of uh, Shikamaru fighting her. And it just kind of snowballs from there. I Small spoiler for just like the first chapter and a half, but whatever. He wins the fight, and she's ordered to kill him. And he's right there when she gets the order. So he does the friendship thing that he does so well. Mm. Friendship. Yeah. Kin. Instead of Shikamaru. Yeah. Uh, uh, the no, sound Kunoichi. Yeah, Naruto fights Kin, eh? not Shikamaru. I, I worded that badly, but yeah. And the second one... I know who Kin is. D- I didn't know. I d- didn't, I didn't notice that he fought her. Uh, well, in the preliminaries. In the bit before the actual arena fight. It was just like... Uh, Naruto would have fought Kiba in that one. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That bit. I, to be honest, I haven't watched it in a long time, so no. I didn't. I didn't know that Shikamaru fought her. Nah. I thought she got killed or something by Orochimaru. In fairness, she does in a lot of fix. So. So many... She does uh, in canon. That's oh, what yeah. happens to her. But it happens a month later. So. Oh. Hmm. oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she she's she's the one with the flute who does the no. old Genji. That was no, that was Taiyu. Like, yeah. Yep. She, no, that was, she uses, that was the other she uses one. needles and stuff. She's like, okay, the dude, like, she's on the team with the mummy dude and the dude with the tubes <laughs> in his arms. Oh, right, the guys who go after Sasuke. Yeah, she's on that the, team. He's in the cave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beat the yeah. shit out of um, Sakura. Yeah. yeah. Would that count oh, as a cave? Because it was no. actually a tree. A, a, a tree, a tree, cave, whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's well, a it was a big hole in it's something. It's a depression yeah. in something. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good enough. A second one is actually a Sword Art Online Fate Stay Night crossover. Uh, it's Fate Revenant Online or Revelation Online. I keep mixing those two up. I don't know why, but uh, it's slow a little bit, and it's very technical. It really explores the magic uh, of Fate Stay because it's serious business in Fate Stay. Magic is. <laughs> yep. And so are these? Y- uh, s- whose stories are these? Uh, Yours. 
No, it's just no. stories no. in general out there that we think should get attention or people should read or something. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll move you. The problem with it, kind of. in my opinion, is a lot of the chapters are omakis. Uh, about a third of them are. It's it's a 38 chapter fic. It's 182,000 words. A pretty good amount, but it's disappointing, I guess, when it updates and you find it's a 2,000 word omaki. It's just kind of also, not all of the chapters are about the main characters. Uh, some of them are just about m explaining mechanics. Like I said, it goes into the magic pretty heavily. So, they're not uninteresting, though, I gotta say. They're just not as good as the main cap uh, character chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you guys? Okay. Have recommendations? Anyone else want to go? Should I take that as a no? Right. Oh, Kenji? I'll throw one out there. So I don't know if I've said this one before. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to recommend Freedom Has a Price by an author named Bleeding Dreams. You have not recommended this before? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it starts basically around the time where Naruto had no one to train him for like the third portion of the tuning exam. Like Kakashi goes off to do his thing and puts him with the Bizu, and he pretty much turns that one down. And it snowballs from there. In oh so many words, he turns him down. And it snowballs from there. And the dude, like, Bleeding Dreams is like a really bleak-ass writer. Like, a <laughs> lot of his stuff is super serious. And cerebral. And I like his style. And this is a good story to me because of it. So, okay. freedom has a price. Anyone else? I got nothing this week. <laughs> All right. I'll go next then. Uh, hopefully, Ignis will get something. Uh, well, yep, I'm, I'm going to recommend <laughs> Bringing Out the Blue by Maguena Wan. God damn it. You were right about people <laughs> needing to think about how to pronounce their names. God damn it. Uh, it is an Avatar fic. Basically, uh, Avatar Last Airbender fic. Clarifying. Uh, Not the one with blue monkeys. Huh? Not the yeah, not the one with the blue monkeys, or the really weird pseudo political one. That yeah. Was a follow up. Uh, so um, first season, uh, you know the stuff with the blue spirit, when Zuko's uh, wearing the mask and he breaks into the fortress to rescue Aang. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then Aang uh, finds out it's Zuko by taking off his mask when he's wounded. Yeah, that bit doesn't happen. So Zuko maintains the blue spirit persona and it keeps going on from there. He keeps going back and forth between uh, sort of supposedly searching for the Avatar while also occasionally going off in his blue spirit persona to help the Avatar and friends. Send me that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. this, is the, this is the second time I've recommended an Avatar fic and Kenshi's like wanted to see each one. So This one sounds actually really good. The okay. first one was really good, and I'm taking your judgment on yeah. this. This one is not as good as Ember's, but it is very good. So it doesn't have to be. Yeah. <laughs> Bring so, out the blue. Yeah, it's a good story. Pretty simple uh, for want of a nail kind of thing. That just kind of spirals from there, and Zuko goes through his conflict of uh, conflict, whatever. I don't know. Earlier than he would have. His conflicting conflict of conflict. Yeah. That thing. I have had two hours of sleep in the past 24, okay? I would have said inner turmoil. Yes, personally. thank you, Kenshi. Mr. Wordsmith. God damn it, I'm a writer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a writer. I'm the web capper. Okay, so that's my recommendation. Ignis, you got yeah. one? Uh, what? Um, no? No. <laughs> I'm still looking through them. Okay. Um, uh, reading and writing well, well, ain't. I, yeah, I, I can't find one that's ha, that isn't so popular. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's popular. Most of the ones oh, we've yeah, recommended yeah. have been popular. Alright then. Um, Alright. Does somebody want to recommend something else? One about, hang on, here, okay. here's one. Right, um, I think that's the right one. Give me a second. Show event for you. Uh, so, what do you guys think about chickens? I think that uh, they are, are very, cool. very annoying to uh, 
to turn into fried chicken. Yeah, that's. I, I'm a black person, so stereotypically. Oh god, I damn it! I didn't even think of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's <laughs> happening again. Kenji, you want some crispy chicken? I actually do. Oh. I don't want any original recipe. I want crispy. Actually, I could go some chicken right if now. If you lived nearby, I might, I might, w I, I might have been able to take you back behind the store and show you where all the magic happens. God damn! Did you have to phrase it like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, when we make Kenji, chicken and stick our hands in oil. <laughs> 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 Uh, I've, I've found I've found something that okay. I like. Um, I think it's the right one, <laughs> um, but don't kill me if it's not. It's called Shinji Almighty okay. Evangelion. Oh, that's a good one. Um, thick. It's um, pretty much just how it sounds. Um, a replay on the on the whole of game to be god for the um, for a week um, play rather than you know being what was his name Bruce. Mm. Um, it's, Shin it's Shinji and um, plays out through the whole um, Evan Evangelion Evangelion series. That's yeah. the one. I, I always get it wrong, yeah. Right, the Evangelion um, series um, after the destruction of um, Unit Zero. Um, um, where was I? After destruction of <laughs> Yeah, he, he meets God who. Just ha uh, happens to look like um, Morgan Freeman. Yes, the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need okay. to help me out here. I'm, I'm, I haven't, I haven't watched, I haven't read it in a while. And I haven't read it ever. I've just seen the film. But so uh, we're no, playing Bruce Almighty no, Adlibs yeah. at this point. Yeah, it is, it is a, sh a humorous fic, and honestly, I find it quite hilarious. And after we finish this I'm probably going to read it oh, again paste that link so I can read it yeah. <laughs> I need things to read yeah. paste it for me uh, yeah it, it, it is a good story it's, it's hard to explain something like this because it's um, you don't got to give the whole breakdown series I'm not as familiar with eh? just give the people like a brief run on what's like what's like what why you dig it and let them, right. let them this thing I dig it most is because it, it's Shinji like um, Bruce does in the um, movie he messes things up messes them about tries to um, save the day with his godly powers but as you know with all superpowers that are omnipresent you try to do one thing it's going to mess up somewhere else and um while he's fighting and destroying angels in really ridiculous ways sometimes um, the angel that comes next that he thought would be pretty easy to go go at has somehow changed and become more more powerful better mm. um, well, I think I think that's the only way I can pretty describe okay. it without going into too much detail that would spoil it Fair enough. honestly Okay, and that is um, the last of our recommendations. So, time for the outro. <clears throat> Thank you for once again listening to the FanFlux Podcast. This was episode 17. If you would like to get into contact with us, you can do so through the Blogspot page in the comments. Or you can do so through our own personal profiles on fanfiction.net. Thank you for listening to the FanFlux Podcast, episode 17. And we're out. Yay. Bye.